We know that making pictures is one of the most powerful tools we have for statistical analysis. An accurate picture can make a great and informative impression at just a glance. But let's talk about how pictures can go wrong and a principle to follow to make sure that this stuff doesn't happen to you and at your pictures. So here is a straightforward bar chart for the ticket class of those aboard the Titanic. We can see, for example, a bit over 250 people on the Titanic were first class and well over 750 people were in the crew. When we compared bar charts and pie charts, link in the description, we saw that in general, bar charts are a bit more versatile and widely usable than pie charts, but there are some ways that a bar chart can be screwed up. Some people may look at a chart like this just consisting of bars and wish it was a little bit more visually exciting. For example, we could replace each of these bars with a thematically appropriate figure, such as a ship, since this is about the Titanic. All right, so let's do it. Here's our brand new bar chart, where each bar has been replaced by a PNG of the Titanic. What do you think? Does this make a great impression of the data in the way that the bar chart does? Does it make an accurate impression of the data? The answer is no. It makes a pretty big impression, but the impression is tremendously inaccurate. There's a pretty simple but dramatic problem with this chart. If we go up to our original bar chart, we can see that there are about three times as many crew members as there are second class passengers. And so naturally, the bar representing the crew members is three times as long as the bar representing second class passengers. Similarly, in this chart, the ship representing the crew members is three times as long as the ship representing second class passengers. You can see how the tips of the ships line up accurately with the counts as they did in the original bar chart. So the lengths of the ships are accurate. You can read accurate information from this chart but it makes a completely wrong impression because it's not the lengths of these ships that a viewer will notice most immediately. It is the area. This is a well-known fact that it's area which will make the most immediate and powerful impression on a reader, and you could probably feel that yourself looking at this chart. So then we have a tremendous problem, because although this ship is three times longer than this one, so the lengths are accurate, the area of this ship, since it's a whole ship picture that needs to be scaled up, the area of this ship is around nine times as big as the area of this ship. This makes it look like the number of second class passengers is completely minuscule compared to the number of crew members, when really the ratio is just about one to three. Since the areas of these pictures are not accurately representing the proportions of the categories they represent, the problem with this chart is that it's violating what's called the area principle. The area principle states that the area area occupied by a part of a graph should correspond to the magnitude of the value it represents, meaning twice the area should imply twice the value, and vice versa. Twice the value should imply twice the area. So you should resist temptation to replace the bars in a bar chart with some fun thematically appropriate picture. If you just keep it with rectangles, this works out great and follows the area principle. In a bar chart, each bar will have the same width. And so the areas will correspond exactly as the heights do. Twice the height will represent twice the value, and that will accurately be reflected in twice the area. We see that up in our original bar chart. Again, all the widths of these bars are the same. So it's only the heights which will really impact the areas. And since the crew bar is three times longer than the second class bar, the area of the crew bar is three times that of the second class bar. This makes an accurate impression on the reader, and that makes it a good chart. So when you're making a bar chart, use the bars, the rectangles. That makes an accurate impression on the reader. There is, however, another simple way to screw up a bar chart and make a deceptive impression. Take a look at this bar chart, which again is representing ticket classes of those aboard the Titanic. This bar chart is just made up of bars, but there is something very deceptive about this chart. Do you see what the problem is? It's the fact that this bar chart does not start at zero. You can see that it actually starts at 200. So for example, the number of third class passengers, which is about 700, 
is a bit over twice the number of second-class passengers, which is about 300. However, the third-class bar we see up here is nearly six times as tall as the second-class bar because the vertical axis is not starting at zero. And of course, since it's six times taller, and these are rectangles, it has six times the area, again, leaving a completely incorrect impression on the reader. This mistake, or trick, of not starting the vertical axis axis at zero can be used to make very small differences look dramatic. Just like in this case, it made a medium difference between the number of third class and second class passengers look quite large. So that's another rule to follow. Bar charts should start at zero. If you start somewhere else, you're risking making an incorrect impression on the reader and accidentally being deceptive. Again, both of these charts, this one that doesn't start at zero and this one with the ships, you can read it carefully and accurately and get correct information from it. But these pictures make impressions, and the impressions they make are not accurate which really does make them bad pictures. Now we talked about bar charts here since they're really easier to screw up. A pie chart, if you're using it in the right way, just by default is going to satisfy the area principle. If some category makes up 20% of your total, its slice will be 20% of the pie, and so it follows the area principle no problem. So that's a little bit about the area principle and how to avoid making deceptive charts. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my statistics course and statistics exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.